So now we've got the main engine to the game actually working. What I want to do next is to add a start screen to the game. So whenever the user clicks on the green flag, the game doesn't start straight away. It's going to display a start game button, which is going to be used by the user to actually click on to actually start the game. So the first thing I need to do is create a new sprite by painting a new sprite. I am then going to click on vector mode. Going to draw a square or a rectangle, which is going to be red and fold on the inside. And then I'm going to draw another rectangle, which is going to be orange, fold on the inside. And last thing I'm going to do now is going to add in some text, which I want to be yellow, maybe. Then I'm going to drag that to the correct place, bring it all together and sort of center it, and then make sure that it is centered. So now we've got the sprite. The next thing I want to do is add some scripts to it. So when the game starts, I want the sprite to go in exactly the middle of the screen. So I'm going to say events when the green flag is clicked, when the game starts. Or when the program is run, I want the start game sprite to go to. I'm going to change this to zero, zero. Green flag at that now it makes it appear in the middle of the screen. And I want to make this button uh, interactive. So whenever the user actually clicks on it, something's going to happen. So again, I'm going to go to events. So I'm going to go on the events, I'm going to say when the sprite is clicked. And what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to use the broadcast feature, which is basically just going to means we can send a message to all our sprites in the game. If you look at the flappy bird and the pipes, they all run as soon as the game starts. But we're going to have to change that slightly. So I'm going to go back to my button. I'm going to say when the sprite is clicked, I want to broadcast. I'm going to do a new message. I'm going to call it the message start game. Click on OK. So when the sprite is clicked, the that's going to broadcast the message saying start game. So at the minute, nothing much happens. What we have to do now is we have to go to the different sprites that we've got. And rather than using the when green flag clicked, I'm going to delete those. What we have to bring in is the when the sprite receives the message saying start game, which is in when I receive start game. So I'm just going to pop that in here, here, and here. So now when we click the green flag, the now the only one of these I might want to green flag it. Now what I might want to do in the bird one, I might want to change it slightly. I might want it to say uh, because obviously the bird stuck there it's like that, so I'm gonna say when I receive start game. When the green flag is clicked, I want the bird to hide. So I'm going to say when the game starts or when the green flag is clicked. I now want this bird to hide. So I'm going to say, I'm going to use a hide, which means whenever we click the green flag, the bird won't be on the actual screen. And then inside one of these, when I receive start game, so I'm going to use this one. I'm going to put in that the bird is actually shown. So again, using looks, I'm going to use show, pop that in there. So that means the bird won't appear on the screen whenever we click on start game you can see the bird then appears now what we need to do on the button next to make that disappear is when the spread is clicked we want to broadcast and then we want it to hide so again we're going to go to looks and we're going to hide the button once it's clicked broadcast start game now what this means is it will work once But if we try to run it again, the button's 
doesn't appear because it's not actually shown. So what we need to do up here is add in a show. So now, whenever we click on start game, the game should run. And again, click the green flag, it appears. Next thing we might want to do, just to make it look a bit more interesting, the button, whenever it starts rolling, just staying still, we can have it actually moving about. Now you, you, you'll notice I've left the clouds in the background, that's just to make it look a bit more interesting, rather than just having the blank screen. And again, I've turned the, I've left the, the pipes going across the screen as well, and you can see the scores going up. Again, to get rid of that, what I have to do in here is change these when the green flag is clicked to when I receive the broadcast start game. So that means now the clouds should keep on moving, which I'm okay with, but the pipe shouldn't appear, shouldn't start moving across until we press start game. So I'm going to leave it like that. You can see the score was counting, so if we didn't have this piece of, co piece of code in, the score will continue to count even though the bird isn't actually flying across the screen. What we might want to do next to the button is just to make it look a bit more interesting rather than just appearing in the middle of the screen. What we might do is we might use a forever loop just to get it rotating or spinning or doing something. So do now is just use the rotate block. So I'm going to rotate 15 degrees to the right and then rotate 15 degrees to the left. See what that's like. You can see what's happening is it's going so quick that the block isn't actually appearing to move. So I might use a little bit of a weight. So once I control use the weight function, green flag that now you can see it's starting to spin about obviously I have to add another weight underneath this one that's why it's looking slightly lopsided and rather than doing 15 degrees I'm going to try out something like 2 degrees but again because we told this button to spin around you can see it's gone kind of sideways now so what we want to do is somewhere up here we want to tell it when the game or when the green flag is clicked, we want to tell it exactly the direction we want to face. So I'm going to go to motion. I'm going to go to point and direction 90 degrees, which should square it up on the screen. Join that onto that. So you can see it's slightly rotating now. And instead of two degrees, I might just have one degrees. And I might change the value of the weight. 0.2 of a second just to kind of speed it up so you can see now the start game looks a bit more interactive so it's giving the user the idea that they have to actually click on the button to see what happens so then the game's going to start what we might want to do now is just close up some of these by using the stop button and rather than stop all stop just the script And the same with this. Stop the script. These are all fine. Might want to put one in here. And in here. This just stops this piece of code, even though. It's not really affecting, affecting the game. It's a good idea to use these stop scripts wherever they're needed. Now if a green flag at the game starts, the clouds keep on moving across the screen. If you don't like that and you want the, the clouds not to start until the game's actually pressed, uh, the button's actually clicked, then what you do is, again, you go into these and you change this to the when I receive start game message. So the broadcast, we can use to send out messages to the different sprites on our game so they do different things at different times.